uh, today is um, I will first make the presentation to you and after if you have some questions you will ab you will be able to ask them uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation. First uh, let me check that the the micro is working so if you can hear me please let a comment in the chat section and then I will uh, begin the presentation. So please just tell me if you can hear me. Okay, okay, I, you can hear me. Okay, then I will begin now. Um, so first I will talk about the work environment of Midas NFX and then the analysis functions. And finally, I will uh, show you some of the pre- and post-process functions. First, uh, what is Midas NFX? Well, it's a multidisciplinary CE solution, which is totally integrated in one environment. So this is the environment of Midas NFX. And uh, I will show you later how, how it works uh, in the software. So in fact, we have two modes in the Midas NFX. One is called the designer mode and the other is the analyst mode. So the designer mode is a simplified uh, mode made for the CD users and for the designers. So they can very simply import any CAD model uh, from any software and make uh, some uh, very easy operation and very quickly to obtain the results they want. The analyst mode is uh, much more complex because you have all the options for the mesh. Uh, you can create your own model inside directly inside Midas NFX. And uh, in these two modes, you have all the solvers of Midas NFX. Uh, I will talk about e each of these solvers after. So the um, uh, the process. Uh, of Midas NFX is uh, very easy. First you assign your loads and boundary conditions, you obtain your results, uh, and uh, what, what is very interesting is that when you modify your CAD model, you don't need to apply again all the loads and the boundary condition. You can directly uh, drag and drop the results of the previous, uh, the, the analysis case of the previous analysis, and then it will be assigned again. I will show you this function uh, at the end of the pre presentation. And we made this uh, process for the designers who uh, want a, very, a software very easy to use and uh, to, to make them gain a lot of time when they are designing new uh, objects. The workflow is very intuitive also. And uh, I will show you that directly in the software how it works. So first, I will import the CAD model, uh, show you how to put the contacts between the parts, how to remove the useless holes and fillets, and uh, to do the meshing, to assign the loads and boundary condition, and finally to see the results. So let me go into the software here. And now, uh, so this is the designer mode, in fact. And if you want to change to the analyst mode, you can change it very uh, easily by changing here. So I just create a new uh, project. And you see in the uh, designer mode, you just have one menu for everything. So it's very easy to understand. Uh, at the left, you have the geometry uh, options to import your model, to simplify contact and materials. Um, after that, you have very easy options for the mesh, and you have the loads and boundary conditions. So, uh, in fact, first I will import the model. Okay, open. Now you see I, I open my CAD model, and um, so the first thing I would like to do is to assign some material to this model. So I go in the walk tree, and you see. Uh, you have uh, several tabs, the material, the geometry, the mesh, control, and the contact. So if you go in the material, you will see uh, there is all, 
there is only one material for the moment, which has been assigned by default. So when you open any model, it assigns automatically the alloy steel to this model. But of course, if you want to assign another type, you can uh, modify it. And if you want to add another material, you just right-click on material and add. And then you can enter all your values for the material you want to add. You can choose nonlinear material also. Uh, but what is really uh, interesting is that we have a very complete material li library directly into Midas NFX. So you don't need, if you don't know the values, you just select the type of material you want. So let's say to add a plastic, for example. And you see you have the structural values, you have the thermal values, and you have the failure uh, values. Now my matter appear, appear here. Uh, now to assign it, it's very easy. Uh, just have to drag and drop it on, your, on the model. So uh, to, to show you how to do it, I have first changed the color. Uh, the co here the color at the screen you can see, it's the color of the geometry. But uh, if you see the material color, color, now you uh, have only one color, which is the alloy steel color. Uh, then if you want to assign it, you just drag and drop the material you created on the parts you want to assign it. So it's really easy. Um, now let's come back to the geometry color. If you want to uh, have more information on each geometrical parts, you can view it in the walkthrough also. So you can click on each um, geometrical part. You will see it on the screen. And here in the property window, you have some information on this part. So uh, you can see the volume, the mass, the mass sensor, center, etc. Now the next step will be to simplify a bit this model. So uh, you, if you do directly the meshing now, uh, you will have a bad meshing because of all these mold holes, all the fillets. I can show you, in fact, if you directly do the auto mesh, you select all OK, <coughs> and you will see the meshing you obtain. It, it will take more, more time to do the meshing, and the meshing will be not as good as if you don't do a bit of cleanup. So this is the meshing without any cleanup. So if you look more closer, you will see the mesh around the small holes, the mesh on the fillets. Uh, this is not very good mesh. So this is why we need to do a bit of cleanup before doing the meshing. So I just select simplify function here. And if you click on first, you select all your parts. You click on find for the holes. And it will find all the holes in your model. So you can click on on any of these holes and it will be um, you, you can show you can see it on the screen so it in red here you can see also the the size range of uh, the, the radius of these uh, holes and let's say I just want to suppress the holes whose the radius is below 15 millimeters so I just select these holes I click on find Select, remove, and you see all these small holes disappeared. So this is why I said to do some a bit of cleanup. And we can do the same for the fillets. So you see all these small fillets. I will do the same, remove. And now if you look at the model, it's really cleaner. And when I will do the meshing uh, right after, you will see the meshing will be uh, much more good, much more better. Now we we'll still have to assign uh, the contacts between these parts because it's an assembly model. So for that it's really easy in fact. You just click on contacts, you select the type of the contacts, you select all the parts in your model and uh, you click on OK. And now if you go in the walk tree you will see all the contact pairs which has been automatically assigned to your model. So it's really, really fast and easy to assign the contacts. And it's all automatic. So if you see here on the screen, it's possible to view um, the, the contact surface for the master contact and the slave contact. And if you want to change that, let's say you want to modify this contact, 
you're just going to walk through and right click and edit and then you can change the type of the contact, you can change the application phase and everything. If you want you can add some friction. It's really easy to manage all the contacts. Now the next step is to assign some uh, loads and boundaries to this model. So uh, you have two possibilities. You can click on the icons here, like support to assign the loads and here the boundaries. Or you can also very easily directly select the faces on your model you want to assign uh, the boundary conditions. So I want to fix these two faces. So I just right click and you see it has been assigned, it has been fixed. Now I do the same to assign the load to these two parts, static load, force, minus uh, 100, let's say, 100, OK, and you see it, it has been assigned. Now let's say you want to change uh, the load or the boundary, then you just select load and boundary here, and you can directly select the load you want to change, right click and edit. And here it's possible to change the value or to change the application phase without any problem. Now that I have done that, I will do the meshing. So as I show you, the meshing in the designer mode is really easy. So you just click on auto mesh, uh, you select all the parts. You have the choice between three types of measure. So the, the high speed tetra measure, the high speed the default tetra measure and the high beam measure. Um, in the designer mode, you can do only the 3D mesh, but in, on the analysis mode, you have much more uh, options for the mesh, of course. So, okay, if you want to add more options, uh, you can click options, apply, and you see very quickly all your parts are meshed. Now, Let's say you're not very um, satisfied with the meshing of some of your parts, so you want to do better meshing. In fact, it's very easy. You just select the parts. You can uh, increase the number of elements, and you just click on Apply, and it will remesh these two parts for you. So quickly, you can have a better mesh. See? Uh, you can also, it's also possible to change the type of the mesh Let's say you want hybrid mesh and uh, 36 apply because it's the boundary, uh, so it's uh, quite important to have a good meshing at the boundary. And now, if you look closer at these parts, the mesh, the mesh here using hybrid mesh, is really, really better than before. So it all depends on the condition you gave, but it's really easy to mesh uh, inside Midas NFX. Now that I've done that, the next step is to assign the analysis conditions. So I'll just click on General. Uh, I create Enter Name. And here you have all the types of analysis you can do in Midas NFX. So I'll, here I will just do the linear static, but you, you can see here you have the model, the buckling, uh, nonlinear heat transfer, the nonlinear uh, static, nonlinear explicit transient. Uh, you have the transient CFD and uh, everything. So let's just select the linear static. Uh, here it seems a bit complex, but in fact it's very easy. Um, here you have all your geometrical parts. Here you have all the contacts in your model, the load and the boundary condition. And if you want to inactivate some of the parts of your model for this analysis, you can very easily drag and drop it here, and they will not be taken in account for this analysis. OK, so I just click on Solve. Uh, I will save it. OK. And now you see uh, the analysis is launched. And in five seconds, I have my results. So it's really, really quick. So here you have in this uh, static analysis, by default, you have three types of results. The total translation, the solid stress uh, for misses, and the safety factor. 
Uh, of course, if you want to add more results, it's possible. You just right click here in insert the analysis results and you can choose the results you want to add. Then it will appear here and you can view it on the screen. Now you can view also the animation, so you can click here. You can view the deformed shape and the undeformed shape at the same time to compare uh, the deformation. Uh, if you want, and a good thing also is that you can move during the animation, you can zoom during the animation, and you can export the movie uh, by clicking here on save to use it after in any of your presentation. Uh, you have a lot of tools also to, to view the results. Uh, for example, you have the probe tool here. So the probe tool, you, you can click anywhere in your model and it will uh, show you the results at this node. And a good thing is it's possible to change the units so in real time. So you want to have it in inch, inches, it's possible, or in uh, meta, it's possible also, and all change at the same time. So it's really uh, quick. Now, uh, if you want to see the minimum, maximum on one part, you can activate minimum, maximum value of each part. Then you select one part, and you will see the results on this part. Now, let's say you want to see only one part of your model. Of course, it's possible. You can come back to your uh, model uh, walkthrough, and then you just have to unactivate the parts you don't want to see, uh, or let's just activate uh, the parts you are interested in, and you will be able to view uh, just these parts on the screen. And it's possible to view the animation just for this part Let's see. Now let's activate again all the parts. Okay. Now you have some a lot of uh, other pre and post process like the clipping plane. You can cut your model in two, and you can drag and drop it the plane like that view what is going inside your model. And if you want really to see what is going inside, you have another option. You can really uh, unactivate some of the nodes. So you can really break your model uh, like that. Sorry. Break your model. And you see, you will be able to see what is going inside uh, the parts of your model. So it's really interesting. Okay, it's all for this um, demonstration. Let's come back to the PBT. Um, now, as you have seen, we have a very large matter of database inside Minus NFX. So, uh, very, you can uh, choose the material you want. You don't have to know all the data. And by drag and dropping, you can assign it to the parts. Uh, I will uh, show you now the analysis function.